a very good morning to all the students of class 7 my name is prena and i'm your english teacher and today from your english book skyline we are going to be reading chapter number 8 so tell me how many of you have this habit of studying at the last moment maybe a week before your exam or maybe just a day or so before your exam you have that habit okay so let us read the story about a girl who had this habit and what happened with this girl on the day of her exam. So here we go. This is chapter number 8 and the name of the chapter is The Process of Coming Grown Up. What is the meaning of the word grown? G-R-O-A-N. The meaning of the word grown is when you make a sound, you know, the sort of a sound that you make because you are displeased about something, because you are unhappy about something. And does this word sound like uh, some other word in English? Yes, it sounds like grown, which is G-R-O-W-N. That is to be matured enough. So this girl is... Uh, you know, she, she has her exams right on her head and she has not studied all around the year. So instead of acting grown up, G-R-O-W-N, instead of acting like a grown up, she groans, G-R-O-N, G-R-O-A-N. She groans about her exam. You know, she doesn't like uh, studying at all. So it says, the introduction says, this lesson is about a girl who had not studied throughout the year. She'd only started hard over last two weeks before her exams. Let us read the lesson to know she learned how she learned to study regularly. Here we go. There was this exam, see, not the first that I'd ever done, but definitely the worst I'd ever done or was about to do. I had started hard over the last two weeks, though I must confess, not much before that. I would stayed up till 2 a.m. the night before and tossed and turned the right, uh, the rest of the night mugging valence, valencies, formula, dates, the works. So this girl, just a few days before her exam, she thinks that, you know, she's stays late up at night she can learn everything that was taught the entire year whether it is for social science whether it's for science maths whatever subjects she thinks that you know i can learn it up all or i can just mug it up very easily i know what are the teachers super heads and grown-ups so here she's referring to grown-ups as in g-r-o-w-n but she's calling them with the other word. Grown-ups would groan. So she's saying, you know, I know what my teachers, what my parents, uh, so they all have this standard statement and they would say, that's not the way to study. No wonder uh, you do so badly. You should study steadily throughout the year and so on and on and on. So this girl says that, you know, everyone is going to lecture me at the time of result. That, oh my God, your result is so bad. Why didn't you study the entire year? She's fed up listening to all that. Anyway, to get back to the point, the exams had really gone bad. I'm not a fortune teller or anything, but I could predict that red would be the predominant shade of the report card. So look at this girl. She knows that she's going to flunk in all the exams. She's so much sure about it, obviously, because she's not studied all throughout the year. Two papers were left, the most dreaded ones, Sanskrit and Maths. I must have some brain deficiency or something because I just can't get the hang of these. Uh, to get hang of something means to understand something. So this girl is saying, I cannot get a hang of Maths or Sanskrit. I cannot understand these subjects. So she's saying that maybe there's some deficiency in my brain. Maybe there's something lacking in my brain. I've been sitting in front of my books, my mind oscillating like a pendulum between two subjects and absor absorbing neither. So she's open maths book also, she's open Sanskrit book also, and she's trying to study both these subjects. But is she able to understand anything from both the subjects? No. Time was running out of my leaky boat. 
Panic washed over me like an icy cold shower. I felt sick to, sick to the stomach. Why, oh why, hadn't I started my revision earlier? Why did I always, always, always leave everything to the last minute? Somewhere, this girl is regretting that why I decided to study at the last moment. The dreaded day dawned. So, the day of the exam came. The toes stuck in the throat, the feet dragged unwillingly. I was sunk, stuck and simply sad. I tried to quell the fluttering in my own stomach by telling myself, it'll be all right, once it starts, it'll be fine. So this girl, she's trying to convince herself that don't worry, everything is going to be fine. You'll be able to clear the exam. But fine, it was not. The words on the paper leapt up and buzzed around me like a swarm of angry bees. I tried to hold on to them. I tried to focus, but they wouldn't stick and they just wouldn't make sense. Deep breathing usually helps. Try it, I told myself. I breathed in. Nothing happened. Try again. Breathe in. Nothing happened. So this girl is trying to do everything so that she's able to understand what question, uh, what is the question written in the exam. But she's not able to understand it only because she had not started the entire year. I tried again, but the question paper swam and my eyes became swimming pools. So this girl started crying now because she could not answer the questions. Little numbers and the letters splashing about in glee. So she felt that the numbers or the, uh, you know, the formulas or the equations which were written on the maths paper, they were laughing on her. They were making a mockery of her. Happy to get back at me for all the abuse and neglect I had met, uh, meted out over the year. My brain went blank. Faint whispered a voice inside me. Just pass out. So now this girl uh, has a plan. This girl has a plan. She says, let me act as if I have fainted. So what's going to happen? I'm going to get all the attention. And even if I get, even if I fail in my exam, no one is going to say me anything because everyone will think, oh, I was so unwell. That's why I could not write the exam well enough. Before I could think before, I'd really even made up my mind it made up itself for me. So this girl is all ready to act that she's fainted. My body went limp, my eyes shut and I began to roll off in the chair. My eyes fluttered. I peeped out from under my lashes. So this girl just looked up. Better not hit my head on the furniture as I go down, I thought. I hit the floor, not too hard, making sure that I pillowed my head under my arm. Bliss, no more numbers. All around me, there was shrieking and a screeching of chairs. Ma'am, ma'am, she's fainted. All round faces girls. All around faces girls, the teacher. Move, move, girls, get back to your desk. Give her some air, give, give her some water, give her a slap. So now the teacher, when she got worried, she said, oh God, give this, uh, let, let this girl get some fresh air, give her some water. Oh, oh, time to come around. Better not overdo it. Ma'am, she's coming around. She's coming around me. She's coming back to her senses. Shh, it's okay. It's all right, child. Are you all right? Now the teacher is asking this girl that, are you all right? I fluttered my eyelashes convincingly like this. Something like this. Yeah, yes, ma'am, I think so. Finally, I was lying quietly in the darkened sick room, smiling secretly. Ah, sweet success. This was so easy. A wonder. I hadn't thought of it earlier. I guess this is not something one can make a habit of. That would be just too stupid. I swear, next time I will study really, really hard. I will start at least three months in advance. But for now, let me enjoy this blissful state of escape. So this girl is sitting in the medical room of her school and she's saying, see, I cannot make this habit of fainting every time. So next time I will study at least three months in advance. But as of now, let me enjoy the attention that I am getting. 
Pretty soon my parents arrived, white faced, tight lipped with tension. I felt guilty then, of course. I'm sorry, I whispered as my mother bent over me. Shh, it's all right. It's all right, Bita. It wasn't your fault. I shut my eyes double quick so she could not look in and see the guilt. And I also shut my mouth tight. So this girl, she thought that, you know, if my mom, she looks closely into my eyes, she'll be able to figure out that something is wrong. Obviously, because she's uh, her mom and, uh, you know, mothers can always make out that something is wrong. There's something fishy. So she thought that let me just not have those expressions and let me also not utter the truth. Home now, clean white sheets, comfy loose clothes. Comfy is the short form for comfortable. Lovely. That is until the doctor arrived. Oops, I hadn't thought this far. What I Would I be caught red-handed now? So the parents thought, let us call the doctor and see what was the problem. So this girl gets a little worried that, oh, I didn't think that my parents are going to call the doctor. Thermometer, thin little torch, checking my eyes, fingers, blood pressure, reflexes, the works one by one. Everything was well perfect. My mother's face relaxed a bit, but I noticed my father's face got a little more furrowed with worried lines. I knew what he was thinking. If everything is so perfect, then what exactly was wrong with her? So this girl realized that somewhere her father is suspecting this act of getting fainted. Can I just talk to her for a few minutes, please? Said the doc. That is the doctor. Smiling my parents out of the room. After the door had been shut behind them, she said, you didn't really faint, did you? So now the doctor, of course, because even the doctor could, uh, you know, readily understand that this girl was only acting. She had not really fainted. I held my breath. I hadn't expected her to be so blunt. Deny it, advised my inner voice. Don't let her trap you. Look, she said, if you faked it, that means if you acted like that, I think you should tell me now. She told me that if I hadn't been faking, then it wasn't a good sign. We will have to go in. In? So the girl is wondering, what does this in refers to? We will have to open up your brain. What about my hair? Shaved off? She said in a voice of doom. So that means the doctor is telling the girl that there's going to be a lot of trouble for you. We're going to shave your head and we're going to open your brain. The tears in my eyes were doing a cabre. So uh, she felt that the tears were dancing and you know, she did not know whether to allow her tears to roll down her eyes. Somehow even getting 3% in maths and a huge scolding from my parents seemed better than being bald headed zombie with a disconnected brain. I faked, I said quickly not even bothering to whis whisper. I'm sorry, but yes, I faked. She smiled. So the doctor smiled. Of course you faked. You took the easy way out. She held my hand in both hers and said, didn't study. How did you know? Gosh, she wasn't even a psychiatrist and yet she could read the inner workings of my mind. How could you know that? Well, she laughed because I did the same thing myself. See, so the doctor tells this girl that when I was of your age and I was scared because of an exam, even I acted as if I have fainted. What? She was a doctor and doctors were bright. Why on earth would she want or need to do a thing like that? Why did you do it? So the doctor said, I hadn't studied. And then, oh, they had the doctor come in. And then, and then all was fine, of course. I was in perfect health, just as you are. We both laughed. It was a relief. We were still laughing when Ma walked in. What's going on? What's the joke? The doctor stood up, tidying her perfect, not a hair out of 
place here. There's no need to worry. Your daughter will be just fine now. And with that, she snapped her doctor bag shut, shot me a ghost of a wink and left. I've never fainted since then. I now know that if I study regularly, I'll be able to cope up with the exams. So I study. Not too much, but enough. No, not that I'm suddenly doing brilliantly in class. I probably never will. After all, this isn't a fairy tale. This is real life. But I've never fake, fainted either. Probably never will. So, what is happening? This little girl learns a lesson. That whenever you have a task in front of you, you should never try to escape. Whatever task is meant for you, you have to do it because it's completely your responsibility. And like in the story, I would tell all the children that during your exams, please don't try and make excuses because you only make excuses considering the fact that you know that you're going to fail in the exam or you're not going to do well in the exam. So what is the way of... Uh, avoiding being getting scolding uh, scolded what is a way out there's only one way out that is you study all throughout the year so that when you have your exams right on your head you do not have to make excuses or you do not have to uh, you know fake anything you don't have to fake ill health either because you've started all around the year, when your exams are right on your head, you will be able to score well enough. Thank you so much.